up guys welcome back to my channel today's case is going to be on the mysterious disappearance of matthew weaver if you like unsolved mysteries make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future episodes let's get into today's case this is one of the most baffling cases i've ever covered i think i say that with every case but it really is extremely baffling. Matthew Weaver was a 21-year-old guy from Simi Valley, California with a heart of gold. Although he did struggle from anxiety and depression, he always tried to keep a smile on his face for others just to make sure everyone else was in a good mood and taken care of and okay. He lived with his father and stepmother in their Simi Valley home. In August of 2018, Matthew decided it was time to move out and do things on his own. He really wanted to travel and just test the waters. He moved to Granada Hills, California to be closer to his job. Matthew worked as a linesman for his father's telephone pole construction company. Matthew had recently broken up with his long-term girlfriend at the beginning of that month. According to his family, Matthew was taking things pretty well. He had already moved on and had met new friends and was already hanging out with other girls. On August 9th, 2018, Matthew had plans to hang out with a girl from his new neighborhood. That night, he stopped by his father's place to pick up his paycheck. At around 12 a.m., he drove to the house of Melissa Sanchez. Allegedly, the two partied together for the next few hours. They were rumored to have been doing cocaine and acid together. At 4.30 a.m. on Friday, August 10th, Matthew drove Melissa back to her house. After that, cell phone records revealed Matthew's location near Rosa's Overlook. At 5.30 a.m., Matthew posted a Snapchat video of the view from his location. That would be his last Snapchat. CCTV spotted Matthew's car around 7.30 a.m driving near a gated area along the trail. The gate was supposed to be locked, but was left open that day. At 11 a.m., Matthew tried to call Melissa, but she was at work and couldn't answer. So he then sent these really confusing texts to her. Cell phone records indicate that this was his last known contact before his phone either died or was shut off. Saturday, August 11 at 12 a.m., a group of hikers called 911 when they heard a man and a woman screaming frantically and calling out for help. California Highway Patrol found Matthew's car during their search for the two people who needed help. Matthew's car was abandoned on the Topanga Tower motorway near Rosa's Overlook, but there was no sign of Matthew. In January 2019, hikers came across Matthew's car keys around 25 feet from where his vehicle had been found. The angel's hat he had been wearing was also found, as well as a torn white t-shirt with blood stains on it. However, there was no evidence that the blood actually belonged to Matthew. LAPD recently told the family that the items that were found will no longer be tested for DNA, as there was no evidence that a crime had actually occurred. Police really, 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 they really, Okay, I understand a crime hasn't been occurred, but at the same time, there's a person missing. So, we're trying to find that person. Why would you not look at the evidence? The fact that you won't look at the evidence or aren't, is, aren't taking any of the evidence into consideration just completely does the opposite. Like, you have no idea if something, if, if a crime had occurred or not. You have no idea because you're not even looking at the evidence. Like it just counterproductive, in my opinion. Um, I just, I feel so sad and so bad and so embarrassed for Matthew's family. Like, that is terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely horrendous. That is their job. Their job is to give a voice to the victims who don't have one, to figure out what happened to them, to look at the clues that were left behind. I can't believe they're just like, oh, we're going to ignore the clues because there was no crime committed here. But how would you even know? Because you're not even looking at the clues to figure out what happened to this person. I'm going to chill now because they are no disrespect, but really really disappointing law enforcement in california and i live in california that's very disappointing completely just dropping the ball there and 
leaving it up to his friends, his family, and just random strangers who cares about his case to kind of investigate it for themselves and look into it. People who don't even have like the funds to, I bet you a lot of the reason why they don't want to do it is because of the funding, 100%. Anyway, I'm going to stop um, just to keep this video on track because I can ramble on for years and years about law enforcement and the stupid shit that they do. So we're gonna stop, we're gonna just cut it out. I love law enforcement, they do help out a lot, but they're also are really, there's some corrupt parts of it. Let's just say that. One year and a half later and Matthew is still missing. There's a lot of rumors going around involving Melissa's involvement. A lot of people believe that she knows a lot more than she is letting on, than she is telling police, which could be possible. Uh, maybe she's scared or something, but we will never know because the police have stopped asking questions. They're not looking into his case. So that's crazy. It's crazy that first of all, they didn't investigated it didn't look for clues didn't try to figure out what happened to him but then when family and friends and complete strangers who just care about this case um do investigate it themselves and go out and find this evidence and these pieces of information and clues that law enforcement still won't look at it like that's insane to me. Like not only are you not doing your job, but they're doing your job for you without any funding and you still don't even want to consider it. I can't, I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered with law enforcement. I can't. If I think about this, I won't be able to go to sleep tonight and it is 3 a.m. in the morning. So I need to go to bed because really, 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 that that kind of thing really disgusts me i don't know why it's just so disappointing i get so enraged there's also theories of gang involvement and drug abuse which uh we know that he was obviously using drugs he definitely did not have like a clean past if he was on drugs and he accidentally fell over the cliff where's his body why hasn't a body been found like what the heck happened to him it's like no trace of him we will never know let me know what you guys think in the comments down below what are some of your theories i love chatting with you guys and hearing what your thoughts are if you like videos like these check out my last episode i will leave a link on the screen right here and as always don't forget to like comment and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future episodes and i will see you guys next week bye